Hey, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we're going to be talking to you about constant pressure systems and answering the question, is a VFD constant pressure system worth the money? So just to specify before we really get into the meat of the video, I want to make sure that I say that this video is directed at submersible well pumps and uh, the growing popularity of VFD or constant pressure pump systems used in well applications. So we're going to break it down and uh, talk about why or why not you want to have a VFD. So to answer the question, is it worth it? Well, probably, maybe actually is the answer. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it isn't. So let's talk about why and when. So the question often comes up, is a VFD more efficient? The short answer is no. Oftentimes uh, it's overlooked the fact that when a motor spins slower or when a pump spins slower, it becomes much less efficient. When you take into account the fact that most applications in your home are gonna be between one and three gallons per minute, whether you're washing your hands, flushing the toilet, washing dishes, or taking a shower, pretty much all of those things take on, on average about two gallons per minute. Most well pumps deliver more than that, especially in a constant pressure environment. So when you're running the pump while you're using water, you're getting that water much less efficiently than you would in a conventional pump system that simply turns on, fills the pressure tank up, and turns off, and then you've got that steady water supply available, typically for the next 10 or 15 minutes of runtime in your house. So let's talk a little bit about the cost of installation. Uh, interestingly enough, VFDs kind of became more and more popular throughout the 90s, and then the cost started to go down, and they're extremely popular today. Almost every other phone call that I take about a well system, someone's got at least one or two questions about a VFD because they're considering it for some reason or another, whether it be their neighbor got one, they heard about it, or what have you. So the cost of installation on a VFD is actually nowadays quite comparable as, as to where it used to be many years ago. You can be within a few hundred dollars of a conventional system. So really the cost benefit is not significant, but typically in most cases you're going to be running into a higher cost for a constant pressure pump system when compared to a conventional system. So now let's talk about constant pressure. This is one of the main selling points of VFDs, at least to consumers. People get pretty excited about the idea of constant pressure when you don't have a variation of pressure when you turn the faucet on, taking a shower, or when you're looking out the window to see your sprinklers and that arc keeps changing as it would on a conventional pump system. In a VFD system, it's always the same pressure and that's quite nice, but in reality, a VFD costs anywhere from $1,000, 2000 $3,000 depending on the size of the motor when you can actually accomplish constant pressure very easily with an inexpensive mechanical valve. There's a variety of products on the market that do this. There's uh, Cycle Stop, Cycle Guard, uh, just a regular old pressure reducing valve or pressure control valve. Uh, there's a lot of options that can allow a person to have constant pressure on the discharge side that are much less costly than a VFD. But one thing to note is a VFD does accomplish this more efficiently than a mechanical valve because it's able to speed up and slow down the pump, whereas with a mechanical valve, the pump is always running at full speed regardless of the flow. So there are times where uh, a mechanical valve is gonna be less efficient in the long run, but if you've ever calculated the cost per day of running a pump, you're looking typically at pennies, so it's not really a, a huge thing to consider on most residential size systems. So let's answer the question, what are VFDs good for? Just kidding. Uh, VFDs are good for uh, providing constant pressure. That's one of their big benefits is they do provide constant pressure. They provide it efficiently. One of the main benefits and one of the main design criteria of a VFD is cycle protection. So it's going to be preventing over cycling of the pump, which again is going to lend itself to longer life of the overall system when you take out the, the aspect of the very sensitive electronic device that's controlling the whole thing. So in short, 
you're basically trading expense for efficiency. Another benefit of variable frequency drives is that they have a lot of built-in protections for the motor and the equipment itself uh, that basically saves you from having to purchase a motor protection device. So if you've got a low yielding well and you can run out of water uh, or a, maybe you're in a rural area where the power is all over the place in terms of availability, the drive is going to help to protect that equipment. But at the same time, it's also susceptible uh, to some of those situations as well because it is a sensitive uh, device that is susceptible to surges, it's susceptible to harmonics, uh, so it, it can be a difficult situation. Motor protection devices, which are commonly employed on your conventional pump systems, are pretty inexpensive nowadays, a couple hundred, few hundred dollars, and offer a lot of the same protections. So though VFDs offer them, it is arguable that on a conventional system you can accomplish a lot of the same protections for less money. Another major selling point of variable frequency drives is uh, overall system life, or more importantly, motor life, pump and motor life. Since they are on a variable frequency, they can speed up and slow down, you have the ability to have soft starting, which actually creates less torque on startup, you have less inrush current, uh, so especially in those rural areas where those heavy load startups can be an issue with trip and breakers or things of that nature, the soft start allows it to ramp up without really ever exceeding that full load amperage and it can make it a lot easier on the other components in the system and it also lends itself to longer motor life. Without that huge inrush current that single phase or conventional pumps motors uh, actually encounter that that huge inrush of current creates a lot of heat which contributes to the breakdown of the motor windings and in the long run contributes to the decay of the motor so in three phase systems specifically on variable frequency drives where they've got that soft start capability you're able to get longer life Another one of the big reasons to have a VFD is space limitations. Oftentimes, um, there's not a lot of space to accommodate for the number of pressure tanks or the size of pressure tanks that you need to accomplish your flow requirements for your specific application. That was a mouthful. But uh, with a VFD, you can typically use much, much smaller size pressure tanks, oftentimes a fifth of the size of a conventional pressure tank. So when space is an issue, a VFD is a great way to go because you've got one simple box that has all your protections built into it. You can get away with a much smaller uh, pressure tank and, and overall your space requirements are dramatically reduced. So that's one major reason that a person may be kind of forced into a variable frequency drive. Um, and that's not all bad. They, they are not a bad system. The reliability has come a long ways. And um, I'm not knocking variable frequency drives, but I think that there's a lot of situations where they're misapplied and where people are misinformed about how they actually operate and where they are beneficial. So moving on. So let's talk about the, the best or most ideal situations to consider a VFD. The number one reason, in my personal opinion, to consider a variable frequency system is if you have a very wide range of flow. So an example would be a well that supplies water for a handful of houses. There's no really telling how much water you're going to need at any given time because not everybody's on the same schedule, but you need to have your pump size to handle the maximum load uh, in case everybody decides to be home at the same time. So a wide range of flow on a variable frequency system allows you to accomplish that very easily without having a massive bank of storage tanks uh, or pressure tanks and so it's a good method. Another situation where it would be applicable is in a situation where you've got a uh, maybe a small farm or you're doing some agriculture, um, you've got livestock where during the day you maybe need a high volume of water to keep up with watering the fields, watering the livestock, but when you're running your house you're only running maybe a peak of five gallons per minute. That wide range of flow, it, your system is going to be very inefficient uh, when it's supplying water just to the home, but when it's supplying water for the larger portion of the system it's going to be very efficient. And again, the, the compact nature of the va variable frequency drives kind of makes that more 
that makes that the more logical decision uh, just because otherwise you would have a huge bank of pressure tanks. Another situation that I like to use the VFDs is when we've got exceptionally deep wells or exceptionally long wire runs. The benefit of three-phase motors is your wire sizing requirements change as compared to single-phase motors. You've got one more leg uh, that you're able to send power through so your wire sizing is generally reduced by quite a lot. Uh, so when you've got a five, six, seven, eight hundred foot well, you could potentially look at the cost difference between the wire and the motor and the drive compared to that of a conventional system. And you might find that actually the drive is less expensive because wire is very expensive. Um, so that's one reason to consider it. The thing that you want to pay very close attention to is every drive manufacturer publishes wire sizing charts for their specific drives. And those wire sizing charts are there for a reason because harmonics and interference can happen uh, on the lines both outgoing and incoming power uh, that can cause the drives not to function properly and you may have to use line reactors, load reactors uh, and in those instances you're probably not going to be saving any money by going that route as compared to conventional because of the added cost of the extra components to protect everything and make sure it runs properly. So just be aware of that, do your research and uh, if you need to give us a call we'll be, we'd be more than happy to help answer those questions. And last but not least, I, I beat this one to death throughout this video but it's a big one. Um, so space requirements. If you need a compact area to have your control system and, and pump system, then a VFD is a good way to go because it is, again, very compact compared to a conventional system. So this was just a short video where we wanted to go through uh, what, what things to consider with a VFD and whether or not it's worth it. And the answer is it depends on your situation. It depends entirely on what you intend to do with the pump and whether or not you're going to maximize your dollar. Uh, so if you have questions on maximizing your dollar, considering a VFD or a standard conventional system, give us a call. We're happy to give you a quote, give you advice, whatever you need. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you got something from this video. We're going to be making much more and uh, we're also working on a more in-depth VFD video, but I thought it would be kind of cool to answer this question first since this is kind of the top level and then we're going to jump into all kinds of depth on VFDs and look at different scales, different applications, and, and just kind of tear it open and, and see where it takes us. So we'll catch you next time. See you later.